on 91.3 and the Sport FM app. Sports Breakfast with Jacob Landsmere and Wayne Clark. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday morning here in the West. Plenty still to come. Darren Bennett standing by, live from Oklahoma. The magic of radio. You can go from one side of the world to another in a matter of moments. Josh Wise off on a family holiday. Wish Josh well. We've called up a big name off the bench. West Aussie at heart, former West Coast Eagle, former Melbourne Demon, but made his biggest mark as a punter in the NFL over the space of a decade and still doing great work in that space to help some young Aussies now try and realise a similar dream to him. His name's Darren Bennett. He's with us here on Sports Breakfast. Darren, good morning or good afternoon to you. Yeah, it's good afternoon to us. It's uh, We're in the middle of winter here, guys, so it's... It's cold. I'm looking forward to getting home for my first Aussie Christmas in 30 years next week and uh, a little bit of warm weather. We've got lost all the leaves off the trees here and it's around the old zero mark Celsius um, overnight and then warms up a bit during the day. But warm up is a very relative term because it's not as warm as where you guys are right now. No, we're sitting on a beautiful 30 degree day expected here in the West and, and more of that to come. And you mentioned that it's been a while since you've been in, in Perth for Christmas. You, you hail from this beautiful part of the world that we call home. Darren, you're also here for some, um, for some work opportunities with some young Aussie punters in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so we've been I, I, uh, working with Sab Rocker over in Melbourne, who he's a, obviously an AFL, NFL legend as well. And uh, there's a group of guys that have been bringing kids over for a long time. And then there's some other kids that, that sort of wanted some different coaching. So uh, we've been coaching guys. I've been mentoring guys since I retired in 2004. And I've had a lot of guys come through, NFL guys and college guys, and, and we, they use us as a base here when we're in San Diego and now here in Tulsa um, so that they don't, you know, when they only get short breaks in their college year rather than flying all the way home to Australia. My wife's from, from just outside Bendigo in, in Victoria. So we give them a bit of Aussie hospitality and we take them for a punt and then send them off back to college for the rest of the year. So um, we've got a couple of, couple of camps. We have about 10 kids in our, in our uh, academy in Melbourne at the moment and a couple of boys in, in Perth. And, and uh, so we're coming across to give those guys some instruction uh, on the 19th and the 20th of this month. So it should be fun. I'll hopefully I'll get a fish in the Swan River or down at uh, the Peel Inlet in Mandurah if I can get a chance where my brother lives and, you know, just uh, pass on some of our knowledge and see if we can get some boys excited about coming and having a punt and coming to America for college. Uh, Darren, we seem to have a, a, quite a number of Aussies over there in different ways, but mainly in the punting thing. It... <laughs> the skills that they've got here do you have to change it much what is it a good place to be recruiting from in australia and or is it just the punting aspect of it well wayne i mean we have obviously jordan mylata who uh you know is uh, there's certain things that you can't coach and jordan mylata is six foot eight 370 pounds mm. 145 or 150 kilos you can't really teach that, you know, that's something that was a given. And uh, we've got a couple of kids that play tight ends, one of the catching positions, uh, but mainly the guys come through and play at the punting position. And, you know, you guys know from Australian rules football, we have a really unique connection to kicking the ball and, and we do it sort of like the Americans throw it to a wide receiver. We do that with our foot. And so, you know, they've never really seen that before. A lot of the boys in college, they really only just utilize the drop punt uh, until they get into wet, you know, wet and cold weather. A lot of times the drop punt doesn't go as far. So we teach them a spiral as well. And, and we try to set them on a, on a uh, what, what we call a pitch count. So in the first year, you know, they do what's comfortable to them, which is moving around with the ball and hitting drop punts, uh, trying to keep it away from the punt returner. And then as they get more comfortable with being in America, being in college and being in that situation, then we sort of let them bring that spiral in uh, to hit those longer, higher punts towards the sidelines. So it's been very successful. We've had uh, quite a few guys go through and, and been successful. And, and, you know, there's other kids that have come through from, from the other group of guys in Melbourne, but not all of them want to do that. Uh, you know, so we're only too happy to help any Aussie boys that want to give it a shot. So... 
Um, like I said, we're going to run one in Leaderville on the 19th of December and then uh, one down at Bunbury on the 20th and see if we can get some more West Aussie boys excited about going to college. Darren, you've been credited for introducing the, the punt kick uh, the, over there. I mean, how difficult was it for them to accept the difference, uh, the way that you wanted to kick or, you know, was there problems? Well, so I did it my first year uh, when I was playing at the Chargers and they really had never seen a ball kick end over end like that except for kickoffs. And so the reason I sort of introduced it was to control a spiral on a shorter field when you're just outside field goal range is a lot, is a lot more difficult. And obviously with our accuracy kicking the ball, putting that ball inside the 10 yard line uh, is a big advantage if you've got someone that can keep the ball out of the end zone. And so I showed my first coach and he, it was too funky for him. He's like, no, look, you're good at the spiral. Let's just do that. And then I went over and played in NFL Europe in Amsterdam. And the coach that was there was the San Diego State uh, University coach. And he'd been to training camp and seen me hit that punt. And so he said, do you think this would work in our game? And I said, well, let me try it. You know, the consequences of screwing it up in Amsterdam were a lot less than, than with the Chargers. So... Uh, he let me do it and it was super successful and so he then spoke to my coaches when I got back and then they let me do that from then on so you know I had a special teams coach named Frank Novak who he's like man I love those Australian kicks have you got one that would work and now those guys use banana kicks and you know you watch Lou Headley hitting this misdirection drop punt uh, you know in the game and so it's slowly had a, an evolution where it's become the acceptable thing to hit inside the 20s and now you know all the college kids because they have different coverage rules in college so when the ball is snapped to the punter everyone can cover so you can get a lot more guys down the field so you don't necessarily need as much hang time as you do in the in the nfl game in the nfl only the outside guys are allowed to cover so you only have two guys possible before the ball comes off your foot so that's why hang time is a lot more important in the college in the the nfl game than it is in the college so you know, that sort of played into a lot of the Aussie boys being able to use their drop punt while they get comfortable and used to college life. You know, it's a huge thing for these boys. It's probably 80 hours a week between studies, workouts and, and playing. So, you know, it's a, it's a big... One of our kids that's at Marshall University, actually a boy named Alec Clark from Perth, said uh, it's like drinking out of a fire hose when you first get there you know there's so much information thrown at you when you first begin and so you know that so we try and let them drop punt the first year because that's their advantage and that's where they feel most comfortable and i think that helps them settle in yeah it's such a unique skill and it's great to see it uh, having been introduced and you've been such a trailblazer for it but yeah to see the the different kicking styles is something very fascinating in itself Darren, it's been a pleasure for us here to, to chat to you and thank you for, for giving up a few minutes. I know it's been a busy day for you uh, with the work that you're doing. So uh, wish you all the best uh, there on the other side of the world in Oklahoma and safe travels back to the West for, for Christmas. Hope it's a great experience back here in Perth. No worries, boys. Look, yeah, looking forward to it, looking forward to it. So if anyone wants to contact us, just hit me up on uh, Facebook or whatever and we'd love to see some of the West Aussie boys down for a punt. Let's hope that there's a few out there who are keen to uh, try and follow in your, in your footsteps. Thanks to Darren Bennett for joining us this morning. Live from Oklahoma, joining us in the absence of Josh Wyan. Yeah, great to chat to someone who's lived out that an incredible journey that continues now. He's trying to help, I guess, smooth the next generation through the same experience he had, which was uncharted when he started. I was sort of uh, wondering what the accent was going to be like, but it was no still pretty Aussie, wasn't no, it? No, he's got the Aussie, uh, for, the Aussie for twang For being over there for pack. 30 years. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, yeah. Great to chat to Darren. And, yeah. And if there's anyone who's interested, um, check out Darren's Facebook page. He created a lot of one with that punt kick, but yep. also that he, I think there was a couple of times where he actually had a kick and then, but then tackled, you know, on, a, on the, the, the returner. And, and which that wasn't, you know, like your, your kicker. They're no. little blokes that didn't, but he had the Aussie rules background. Yeah, the and tackling technique. And they, they, What's going on, mate? You're not allowed to do that, you know. Uh, changed a lot of aspects yeah. of the game for the better. Darren Bennett, and lovely to chat to a West Aussie at heart, a US uh, these days, a citizen, I'd assume. He's been there for 30 years. So uh, a great week of NFL. Great to chat to Darren Bennett here on Sport FM. Check out his great sporting lives with Glenn Mitchell. That was a terrific episode as well, reflecting more in-depth on Darren's journey. Let's take it into the States. It's time for the latest in... Uh...